For you I lift my heart to live For you I lift my hands to worship And it's for you I live Ooh, For you I sing my soul to worship When the load is too heavy to bear For you I lift my heart to worship Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I am so grateful that we get to spend this time together. Another Wednesday night hour of power, this empowerment. And I am so grateful because I think that it is important uh, that we get to delve into the word and to spend a little time uh, just, just dialoguing and talking with each other. And this is our Wednesday night um, empowerment, and I want you to be empowered on tonight, um, so that way you know uh, what is going on in the Word of God for that pertains to your life. So I need everybody real quick, everybody do me a favor, I need you uh, to tag somebody to share this, and I'm not going to be on here long, it's our Wednesday night, it's one hour of empowerment, um, but uh, I just have a couple of things to talk to you tonight about, and I want to make sure that we get it in on tonight. And so I need you to do me a favor. I need you to share this. I need you to tag somebody. I need you to press those hearts, press those thumbs up, and I need you to comment. I need you to comment. It's important that you comment on tonight. I want to get these shares and these comments up and just make sure that you're doing so. So that way we can stay interactive with each other. And I see that some of you are coming on right now. And I'm so grateful um, for you uh, that are coming on, that is spending some time with us. Uh, once again, this is our hour of empowerment. And I am ready to delve into the word of God. Are you ready on tonight? I need somebody to write down, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready to do what God has called me to do on tonight. And that is to give you the word of God, give you the word of God. And I am excited. When I say I am excited, I am excited, y'all. I'm excited because I love learning and teaching the word of God. I do. I do. I think it's important and I think it is um uh it is uh 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 critical uh in this time uh that we live in. And so I want each and every one of us to get ready uh for what God is going to do uh in our lives on tonight. So uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we glorify you for all things. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for blessing us on tonight. We thank you, oh God, because we believe that you are our God and you have done marvelous things in our lives. So we ask on tonight for these few fleeting moments that, God, you will give us uh, the insight, the divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that we can do your will, so that we can uh, speak your word unto your people. We glorify you and we magnify you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen, amen, and amen. I want to talk about tonight 
um, the two wills of God, the two wills of God. There are more wills of God, but I'm, I'm only going to be able to tackle um, tackle two on tonight. And I want um, I want us to make sure that we are writing this down. Once again, we are sharing this. We are uh, pressing those hearts, pressing those thumbs up. And we are making sure that we um, uh, we comment on tonight. We comment on tonight. I believe that God is going to say something magnificent. And I want you all to make sure that you are that you are interacting and you are um, uh, getting excited. You writing this down, and also if you uh, if you miss something, go back to the replay and um, make sure that you watch it again. And and you can comment, you can write down stuff, you can press those hearts, press those thumbs up, you can press the stars too. Um, and so I'm I'm grateful on tonight. The two wills of God that I want to talk about on tonight is the permissive will and the perfect will. The perfect will and the permissive will. We'll start off with the perfect will um, because, um, you know, oftentimes we, we, we try to figure out uh, what is the will of God for our lives? What is his perfect will for our lives? And so um, uh, one of the scriptures that came to mind, I want y'all to write this down, Romans chapter 12, verse one and two. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, and we understand that the mercies of God in the Latin term uh, is mercy, um, mercies, um, which means uh, uh, the price being paid, the price being paid. So Jesus did something to pay the price for our sins. So I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies because of the mercies of God, the price that was paid on Calvary. Now it is up to you to present yourself. So your sins, your transgressions, your iniquities were forgiven. Now it is time for you to present yourself because it was paid it was paid for on the cross. Can I just stop right here and tell y'all, y'all don't have to do anything else. You don't have to do anything else. I spoke about that on our five minutes of prayer this morning. You don't have to work for the mercies of God. It's already freely given to you. You don't have to, you don't have to sit there and try to earn it. It is already freely given to you. We have to stop thinking that we have to do something just to obtain the mercies of God. You can't do nothing when it's already freely given to you. He has pardoned your sins. He has forgiven you. He has showed you compassion, showed you kindness. Even when, watch this, the Bible says, e even while we were yet sinners, his, his mercy or his compassion, his love was commended towards us. He pardoned our sins because of his acts on the cross. He paid for our sins on the cross, something that you could never do, something that you could never do. He did it for us. Watch this, y'all. He did it for us so that we could receive his mercy on tonight. We can see, receive his mercy. So that word mercy is derived from the medieval uh, Latin term, which is uh, merc uh, merc merced uh, or mercies, uh, which means price paid, which means price paid. And that gives the connotation of forgiveness, benevolence, kindness, love, you know, so it's all in there uh, where uh, God has pardoned or watch this, y'all. Uh, what we uh, justly deserve, he does not give it to us because, watch this, the sin or the price for that act has already, God, I thank you. The price for that act has already been paid. Let me say it one more time. The price for the act that you've committed has already been paid. Let me say it one more time. The price for the act that you've committed has already been paid. So therefore, watch this, y'all. It, it's just like when you go to a restaurant um, and somebody pays the bill for you. You don't have to get up there and try to pay the bill because it's already been paid for you. Okay, went right over your head. I seen it. I seen it. Uh, uh, for instance, if you're uh, if you're in a, a Dunkin' Donuts line or a Starbucks line, and, and, and somebody pays uh, the bill, you 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 didn't even know they paid for your meal or for for your coffee, 
and you didn't even know it. They, 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 they paid it. So that way you don't have to get up to the counter and pay for it yourself. All you do is order the food. All you do is order the food and receive. Did, did y'all get that? Did y'all get that? I need somebody to write down price paid. Price paid. I need you to write that down. Price paid. Price paid. Then I need you to write down, I receive. I receive. Yeah, see, see, the one thing about it, people of God, is that you have to receive the mercy. You have to receive it. So if if somebody already paid for it, the only thing that I got to do is receive it. You got to receive the gift that God has given you, and mercy is a gift. I don't, I don't, I don't care how y'all try to term it, label it, uh, standardize it, whatever you want to say. To me, it is a gift. It is a gift because somebody is giving me something that I know I didn't pay for. It is a gift. It is a treasure. It is valuable. It is worth something. And I came on tonight to tell you, by the mercies of God, we are not consumed. His compassions fail not. Great is thy faithfulness because his mercies are new every morning. His mercies are new every morning. So I uh, let me stop right here and tell you once again, uh, even if you trip, you stumbled, you fail, whatever happened to you, you still have the mercies of God. You still have the mercies of God. No, I'm not giving you a license to do what you want to do. But what I am saying is that when you have some sense of remorse, you receive his mercy. So I want you to pick your head up. I want you to pick your head up and know that you got the mercies of God. You got the mercies of God because the price has already been paid. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said the price has already been paid. The price has already been paid. And so for what God did, because of what Jesus did and what God did, he gave his only begotten son to cover, watch this, for our behavior, to show love towards us uh, that, so that we can be reconciled back to him and we don't receive justice for the acts, for the acts that we've committed, but we receive mercy. We receive mercy. So the Bible says this, watch this, y'all. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, it is, uh, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body. You present your body, and, and we could break this down, but I want to get somewhere because time is, 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 is leaving real quick. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, watch this, by the renewing of our minds, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable, watch this, and perfect will of God. The perfect will of God, watch this, y'all, and you got it, yeah, and I want y'all, I want y'all to really, really uh, tap into this because the perfect will of God is God's unchanging will. It's his unchanging will. The perfect will of, of God uh, means that uh, God, this is something that God has set in order, something that God has set in order for our lives, for our lives. So this will will not change. All right, all right. Uh, uh, somebody write down the perfect will of God will not change. Come on, I need you to write that down. The perfect will of God will not change. Come on, somebody write that down. The perfect will of God will not change. It is the approved will for our lives. The approved will, the, the approved will for our lives. Am I, am I, are y'all learning something so far? It's the approved will for our lives. That's why it's what is good and pleasing and, 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 and the acceptable 
the acceptable because this is what God has ordained for our lives. God has ordained this uh, so that so that we could walk in, watch this, live in the perfect will. The perfect will, which means, watch this, I need y'all to write this down. There's no error in his will. It's perfect. There's no fault in his will. It's perfect. There's no erroneous Things happening in his will. It's perfect. It's perfect. Y'all not talking back to me. I, I, I need y'all to really, I need y'all to really uh, talk back to me uh, because I, I want you to understand that uh, the perfect will of God is fail proof. Y'all write this down. Y'all write this down. Come on, y'all. The perfect will of God is absolute. So, 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 so therefore, therefore, nothing can, watch this, make the perfect will of God fail. So, if we are, uh, watch this, remember God says, uh, Jesus says, I came to do uh, the will of my father. I came to do the will of my father. The, the will of my father is uh, the, the my meat is to do the will of my father. The, the, the approved will that was planned out for me. Each of you have a plan for your life. Am I, am I messing y'all up or are you catching what I'm saying? Each of you have a plan for your life. And that plan for your life is the perfect will of God for your life. So whatever is in that plan, watch this, y'all. Whatever is in that plan, it's already been mapped out. The course has already been mapped out for you. So you are walking or living in the perfect will of God. That's why things aren't failing because you are living in the perfect will of God. Now, now there's something called the permissive will, which we're going to get to. Because whenever you step out of the perfect will, sometimes you are in the permissive will. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. We'll get to that in a second. But you got to understand that the perfect will of God is immaculate. The perfect will of God is indefectible. Are y'all catching me? Are you catching me? The perfect will of God is blameless. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me on tonight? So therefore, it's flawless. Are, are, you, you catch me. So therefore, whatever God has ordained for our lives, the perfect will of God is already complete in our lives. Somebody write that down. It's complete in me. Come on, somebody write that down. I'm almost there, y'all. It's complete in me. The perfect will of God is complete in me. So therefore, watch this. Even if I try sometimes to go the wrong way or do the wrong thing, somehow the perfect will redirects me so I can stay in his will. Remember, Jesus said, he, he, he said, he said, uh, uh, he was in the, uh, uh, I think the garden of Gethsemane and he said, not my will. Let this cup pass from me. Let this cup pass from me. But not my will. But thine will be done. Because he wanted the perfect will of God to be completed in his life. Are y'all hearing me on tonight? It's about the perfect will. So you got to get rid of my will. Watch this. So that the perfect will can be manifested. Jesus said, not my will, but thine will be done. Because if I, if I uh, walk in my will, if I do what I want to do, I'm not operating in the perfect will. <laughs> I 
I'm not operating in the perfect will. The perfect will, watch this, is not my will, but his will. Are y'all hearing me? I don't see y'all writing nothing down. I don't see no hearts, no thumbs up, no stars. The perfect will, watch this, y'all, is me lining up with the approved plan for my life. The approved will for my life. So therefore, if I'm operating or living or going according or abiding or yielding to the perfect will of God, sometimes it's going to go against what I feel, my will. That's why Jesus said, uh, let this cup pass from me. I, I, I want this to, I, I want to get out of this thing, but not my will. Are y'all hearing me? Not my will, but thine will be done. God, I need you to complete your perfect will in me. God, can somebody just lift up your hands right where, hallelujah, right where you are and say, God, complete your perfect will in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, let your perfect will be manifested in my life. God, I need your will, not my will. But your will be done in my life. That's what I need. That's what I desire. God, I need it. I need it right now. Ooh, God, I thank you. Y'all ain't talking back to me. Remember what he said. Because the perfect will lines up with kingdom agendas. God, y'all ain't, y'all. Can somebody write that down? The perfect will lines up with the kingdom agenda. What does the king want? What is the plans for the king? What is the king's plan? What has he decreed? Oh. The perfect will lines up or aligns itself with kingdom agendas. That's why, watch this. When you are walking in kingdom or operating according to the calling upon your life, you can say, thy kingdom come. Thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because I'm not, I'm not looking at these uh, man-made kingdoms. I'm operating by the spiritual kingdom. And, and, and looking to uh, 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 to uh, to advance the kingdom agenda. The kingdom agenda, what you have set forth. <sighs> Thy kingdom come. Are y'all are y'all hearing me? Are y'all hearing me? Thine kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So whatever your intentions are for my life, I want it to be done to advance the mission of the kingdom, the purpose of the kingdom. Watch this, watch this. He said in his word, and y'all look these scriptures up. Y'all look these scriptures up. He said, he said, I wish, um, uh, what is that? I, 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 uh, God is not slack concerning his promise as some men uh, count slackness. Wishing that, uh, willing that none should perish, willing. What is the perfect will of God that none should perish? 
but all shall come to repentance. Y'all ain't talking back to me, so I guess I'm talking to myself. Willing the will of God is that you should not perish, but you should receive salvation. What is the perfect will of God for our lives? That we receive salvation. I don't care about your background. I don't care about your color. I don't care about your financial status, your economic status. I don't care about your, 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 your uh, address to your residence. I don't care about none of that. That has no bearing upon salvation. Are you willing to receive salvation because that's the perfect will for God uh, of God for our lives? I receive salvation because it's the perfect will. That's why I can present my bodies, my body. As a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Holy and acceptable. Watch this. Watch this. I can present my body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. I present what I am now unto God. Because that's my reasonable service. Watch this. And the only way, the only reason why I can present a holy sacrifice unto God is because I've been renewed. I've been transformed. So now that I am transformed, watch this, y'all. Now that I am transformed, I can prove that which is good and acceptable and watch this. I am operating in the perfect will of God. I have proven that salvation works. And salvation works because my mind has been transformed. My mind has been transformed. Watch this. Watch this. Because of salvation. Can somebody write that down? My mind has been transformed because of salvation. Salvation now has come to renew my mind, which is the perfect will of God for all mankind. So we could talk about our purpose. We could talk about our existence. We can talk about the reason why we were created. But one of the perfect wills of God is that you receive salvation. Ah, God, I thank you. This is good. Are y'all learning something? I need somebody to write down, I'm learning something. I'm learning something. I'm learning something. So the perfect will of God for our lives is to receive salvation. It's to receive salvation. Watch this, y'all. Because we already know it's, it's the plan of God. It's approved by God. So it's for us to receive salvation, and that's unchanging. There is no fault or no error in the perfect will of God. Because the perfect will of God has been proven that if we can present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service and be not uh, conformed to this world. Don't abide by the things and the habits and the lifestyles and the, and, 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 and the ideologies and thoughts and methods, the thinkings of this world, but be transformed metamorphosis, a change, be transformed, converted, proselytized, be transformed by the renewing of our minds. The renewing of our minds have to take place 
Because once you accept Jesus as your personal savior, you're not operating in your old, old lifestyle. Your old habits, you're not thinking the same way. The same methodologies that you used to think. Ideologies and, 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 and thought processes. Now you are thinking according to, to, to what is right. What is acceptable. The perfect will of God. You are lining up with what he believes and what he says. It's the perfect will of God. I hope I explained the perfect will of God for you. So the perfect will of God, watch this, is the approved plan of God for our lives. It's the approved plan of God for our lives. What is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God for our lives? It's the complete plan of God, the complete purpose of God for our lives. Hmm. Did y'all catch that? There's no flaws in the perfect will of God. Then it would be imperfect. But then God knows that where he's he's uh, dealing with imperfect people, even though he has a perfect plan for our lives, he knows he's dealing with imperfect people. Did y'all catch that? I got to go. We're almost there. Even though God has a perfect plan for our lives, he's dealing with imperfect people. Who's trying to develop and mature and live according to the perfect plan of God. But sometimes, watch this, and I want y'all to catch this. Even when it comes to salvation, watch this. And watch this. God, his perfect plan for us is to receive salvation. Willing that none should perish. Willing. The perfect will wills that none should perish and that all shall come to repentance. But some of us, because of our free choice, we volunteer. We volunteer not to follow the perfect will of God, which is to receive salvation. So now, watch this, we enter into the permissive will of God. The permissive will is something that God allows, not that he approves, but it's something that he allows. Because he's not going to force you. Watch this. He's not going to force you to, to, to receive salvation. So the permissive will says, watch this, y'all, that you make the choice. You made the choice. And because you made the choice, now you have to receive the consequences or the ramification of that permissive will. The choice is yours. Are, are y'all are catching that? Are y'all catching that? The permissive will deals with your choice. God will never approve sin. You choose to sin. You choose to transgress. You choose to do these acts. So the permissive will says, okay, since you want to do that, I'm stepping back. You're going to go ahead and do it anyway. I'm stepping back. It's not going to change the perfect will because the perfect will never changed. The perfect will uh, uh, offered salvation to you. But the permissive will says, I'm going to do what I want to do. So God says, because you made that decision, you made that choice. Now you receive the consequences or the ramifications of the, of the decision that you made. The consequences. So when it comes to the, to the permissive will of God, are, are y'all hearing me? Am I, am I teaching you something on tonight? When it comes to the permissive will of God, it's not that God is uh, 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 um, 
uh, approving the things that you've done. Because anything that goes against the perfect will, he didn't approve. He didn't approve. But because, because we are, uh, have a free will and we volunteer to do certain things, exhibit certain conducts, deny what's good for us, we have the consequences of our choices. Okay, I, I, I hope, I hope you're getting something. So yes, God allows it, allows you uh, to do what you want because of your free will. But he does not approve of what you desire. <laughs> he does not approve of what you desire because some of us are willfully disobeying certain things all right for instance you have a child you have a child and your child uh you tell your child um um i i, I don't I, this is what's good for you this is what i need you to do because this is what's good for you and your child goes and do the opposite of what you tell them to do. You've already laid out what was good for them. But since they made a decision, a choice to do what they wanted to do. Now they have to face the consequences for their choice. For their decision. It's not that you approve their behavior or approve their conduct or approve their act. But because of the permissive will, you didn't stop it because they chose to do it. That's why we got to be careful that we are not doing something that is contrary to what God desires for our lives. We got to be careful that not, we're not doing what's contrary to what God desires for our lives. Not that God can't get us out. Not that God can't block it. Not that God can't protect us from it. Because he surely can. But there are some things he's going to allow because of the choice that you make. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. We have to be careful that we are not doing things that goes against the standard and the principles of God. Yes, it's what he allows or what he permits, but it's not always what he approves or validates or endorses. Did y'all get that? So the permissive will is something that God allows, but if it's pertaining to something that's outside of his, if your decision is per pertaining to something outside of his perfect will, Outside of his will, he does not approve of it, although he allows it. What does he allow? He allows you to make the decision. Am I clear, y'all? Y'all talk back to me. He allows you to make the decision. Okay. Some of you ended up with a man 
that God told you to stay away from, that it wasn't good for you. Uh, there's another man over here that I want you to be with, but you chose this man over here. God said, once again, I don't want you to be with this man or this woman, but you chose to be with this man or this woman because of whatever attracted you to that uh, man or woman or gravitated you towards that man or woman. It could be their poker tude. It could be their attractiveness. It could be the affinity, the way they talk, the, their looks, their hair, their tall, their, you know, or short or they're dark or light skin or whatever your candy is that you like. God said that ain't the one for you. But yet you decide I'm going to hook up with that person. And when you hook up with that person, now you have more hell than you have happiness. You have more hell than you have happiness. So you're outside of the will of God, but because God allowed it or you have your permissive will and you're operating in the permissive will, uh, you now have the, uh, the consequences for your choice, your decisions that you made. You have that. You have the decision. You have the consequences for, for the things that you made. But watch this, y'all. Watch this. It's not that God does not love you. It's not that God could not block it. It's not that God could not uh, could not uh, uh, stop it from happening. It's the fact that he knew that you was going to do it anyway, even though he gave you warning. Even though he gave you warnings, even though he gave you clues, even though he gave you hints. The fact of the matter is, is that God will allow certain things to happen in your life. Watch this, y'all. Not because of him but because of your choice. Because of your choice. You, 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 you must be careful, once again, that you are listening to the voice of God. And it's not always that the permissive will is bad, but when it comes to sin, when it comes to doing uh, things that are opposite or contrary to God, you have to pay the consequences, the ramification. And we got to stop blaming that on God. Our consequences, our ramification, not that God is paying you back. God, God, God doesn't want to see his people endure hardship and, 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 and uh, um, uh, in pain and suffering. He doesn't want to see you go through, let me change that, unnecessary, unapproved suffering. He doesn't want to see you go through that. That's a matter of choice. Some things are a matter of choice because of the permissive will. So therefore, it's something that we have um, invited in our lives. If half the things I knew uh, I would get the uh, consequences for or the, uh, the, because of some of the decisions that I made, uh, I probably uh, would go back in time and say, you know what, I'll, I'll never do that again. We got to stop thinking that God is going to pay us back for this and pay us back for that. No, accept his mercy and get back in line with his perfect will. Get back in line with his perfect will. What is it that you want me to do, God? Where is it that you want me to go? I'm ready now to get back to kingdom agenda. Kingdom missions. What is your perfect will for my life? Somebody write that down. What is the perfect will for my life? What is the perfect will of my life? I believe I believe that God God is going to do something amazing in your life when you can get back to the place where we listen where we accept and receive 
his perfect will for us. We must be careful, people of God, that we are not operating, we are not operating in any will that is contrary to the will of God, which will be our will. Watch this. The perfect will aligns yourself with God. The permissive will, watch this, y'all. Hear me when I say this. It allows you to line up with your will. You, you, you know how some of you say, some of y'all say, we tell you, this is what's not good for you. And, 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 and then you say, well, you know, well, I'm, I'm, I'm grown. I do what I want to do. You're operating in the permissive will. You're operating in the permissive will of God. And the permissive will is something that 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 you have to be careful of. Because you got to face the consequences for that. I I, pr I pray that y'all understand the difference between the perfect will and the permissive will. I'll go deeper later later on but I'm, I'm running out of time. The perfect will, the perfect will is God's will. Permissive will is your will. <laughs> Not my will, but thine will be done. The perfect will is God's will for your life. The permissive will is your will for your life. So God allows certain things to, to occur because of your will. He does not approve of it, but it's because of your will you got to face it. He did not validate some of the things that y'all did. That's the permissive will. So we got to stop saying that God allowed me to do it, so it must be okay. No. It doesn't mean that it's okay. Oh, he must love it. No. God don't love sin. Well, he allowed this to happen. He did, but he never approved of it. He allowed it to happen, but he didn't approve of it. He didn't endorse that. He didn't validate that. That happened because of your choices. So he said, you know what? You're a free moral agent. You volunteered to do it. You consented to do it. You yielded yourself to do it, your members to do it. So now that you did that, you got to face the consequences. I'll never approve of it, but you got to face the consequences for it. The permissive will of God. The perfect will lines up with his agenda. The permissive will says, you know what? I'll allow it to happen, but that's your will. I'd rather be in the perfect will of God. Now, let me say something. Sometimes the permissive will is not all bad. Sometimes God will give you, watch this, the desires of your heart. And he'll allow certain things to happen because you have the right heart. Pure. You have the right intentions. So God will allow it to happen. He'll allow certain things to occur in your life and give you certain things. Because you have the right intentions. The right motives. A pure heart. So we must make sure. We must make sure. That we're not seeing everything as bad. 
<laughs> oh, oh my God. But if it goes against God, then yes, that's bad. But if it's something that God desires or allows us to happen because of our pure heart. I wish above all that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. All, all these things. All these scriptures that tell you that God is going to God is going to give you certain things. Because you got the right heart, the right motive. So the permissive will of God is not all bad. It's only when you go against what God has designated, appointed, and, and planned for your life. I hope y'all receive something on tonight. I hope you receive something on tonight. I pray that you receive something on tonight. And 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 uh, I, I I pray that you were educated. I pray that you 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 really really learn something because um, I get excited when I when I can teach teach the word of God when I can delve into the word of God when I actually learn when I learn. And so uh, Romans twelve one and two uh, was uh, our opening scripture on tonight. And I pray that you receive something. The perfect will and the permissive will. The permissive will, if you're going against God's word or against God's uh, kingdom agenda, um, uh, his will for your life, then yes, that's going to be, uh, you're going to face the consequences. He did not approve of that. But if your heart is pure and and your mind is, is in him and you desire something from God, you sought God and you desire something, sometimes he will allow it. He will allow it because your heart is pure and he wants to bless you. He wants to give it to you. But the perfect will of God is something that is unchanging. Something that is unchanging. Something and the perfect will of God for every human being on this earth is that we receive salvation. There is a perfect will or a plan approved by God for our lives. That will not change. Will not change. And I thank God for it. I thank God for it. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We glorify you for all things. We thank you for what we learned on tonight. I pray that your people will be blessed. Your people were blessed. And they were uh, um, uh, enhanced and enlightened on tonight. So that they can advance in your kingdom. Lord, thank you for the understanding and the insight. We glorify you and magnify you for all things. We appreciate you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Listen, on tonight, if you can give uh, to our, uh, this is our Wednesday night. It's our Bible study night, our empowerment night. Uh, and I want each and every one of you to sow a seed if you can. Those who have been sowing a seed um, throughout the uh, ministry, I appreciate you, but we, we need you to be consistent. We need you to continue to do what you do uh, for the ministry. We come on here every week without fail, um, and, um, and I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for everything that you have uh, done for this ministry, and so I'm asking uh, each and every one of you to continue to support, continue to uh, uplift us, continue to press those shares and those uh, in those thumbs up and those hearts and stars. We appreciate you so much. But if you can sow a seed on tonight, I believe that God is going to uh, continue to advance this ministry. I believe it. I believe it. He's going to continue to advance this ministry, and I'm praying that he continues to do so. So thank you for sowing a seed on tonight. Thank you, those who have joined themselves, yourselves. Um, I need you uh, to uh, on tonight, and I need you to sow that ministry, please. I mean, sow the seed uh, on tonight. Sow a seed on tonight, and I, I thank you for what you're doing, and I thank you for uh, obeying the voice of God. Don't hesitate. Don't, don't, don't put yourself on reserve. Uh, just, just, just go ahead and do what God has told you to do. Do what God has told you to do and give as much as God has told you to give on tonight. Go ahead and do so. I thank you so much. I really do. I appreciate each and every one of you for joining yourselves. Uh, 
tonight. I love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. If you can, uh, join us on join us on uh, Sunday. Join us on Sunday, Life Restoration Church, 136 First Street, Newburgh, New York. So join us on Sunday, each and every one of y'all. Please do so. Uh, let's see your face in the building. Let's see your face in the building. Let's pack out the place. Let's pack out the place and come with uh, ready to learn, come ready to praise, come ready to worship. Let's do it, y'all. Let's do it. I'm excited for what God is going to do on Sunday. And so on Sunday, uh, you can come and uh, we start at 915, really. We really start at 915, which is prayer and praise and worship. And then we go into uh, the preached word of God, the preached word of God. And so I'll be speaking this Sunday. Uh, I'm excited. I, I can't wait. I believe that God is going to do something crazy in the building. And so I need each and every one of y'all to be there. And watch this, y'all. Invite somebody. Could you please invite somebody uh, to church? Uh, one person, if you invite one person, tell that person to invite one person, tell that person to invite one person. Before you know it, we'll be having two or three services. We'll be having two or three services. So I, I need each and every one of y'all to invite somebody. And I see it already. I see that we're going we gonna to need a new building already, y'all. I see it. I see it. I already know it. I believe it. I believe God. I believe that he's going to do it. I believe he, he he's going to. I really do. I believe that God is going to do it. I believe it. So uh, I need each and every one of y'all to make sure that you're. Uh, that you're inviting somebody to church, inviting somebody to the house of God. Let's do so. I believe that God is going to do something amazing. Let's advance the kingdom agenda. Let's advance the kingdom agenda. I love y'all so much. Thank you for joining me on tonight. Thank you for joining us. And, and uh, I pray that somebody was blessed. Uh, I pray that somebody was encouraged. I pray that we had some education on tonight. And somebody learned something uh, 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 about the perfect and permissive will of God. I love y'all. Everybody have a wonderful night. And remember this, before we get off of here, make sure y'all share, make sure y'all tag somebody, make sure you put somebody's name. How do you tag somebody? You put somebody's name in there. Some of y'all ain't been sharing this. And I know y'all, 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 I, I see everybody who shares the broadcast. Let's make sure that we share it. Press that share button, everybody. Press that share button and then press those hearts and press those thumbs up. I love y'all so much. Know that I do. Your pastor loves you with all of my heart, with all of my heart. And before we get off of here, everybody write down success is on me. Success is on me. Success is on me. Success is on me. Come on, let's write that down. Success is on me. Success is on me. Let's write that down, y'all. Success is on me me and believe this the devil himself can't do nothing about it especially when success is on you i love y'all everybody have a wonderful night y'all be blessed press those hearts and thumbs up as we go off the air love y'all be blessed